Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. And for some very, very early morning, sorry about the delay, we're slightly late. Um, we had some technical difficulties with the YouTube connection, so we had to fix that. I actually was <laughs> okay. Diego. No, 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 this, this is actually true. Okay. Aside from the other factor, I was actually coding um, the Twitch stream on the website as we were waiting for the fix. So the YouTube got fixed like 10 minutes ago, like five minutes before we had to go live. So I had to input that. But the other reason, yes. And the other reason is for me being late. I'm sorry for if you're watching and you're a couple of minutes late. It's because I was in a previous, in another meeting and I couldn't abort the meeting either. It was a very important topic. But that's not what we're here to discuss today, Diego. We have a special guest because we talked about good morning, good evening, and actually good midnight because it's midnight, almost midnight, or actually midnight where he is right now. So uh, should we go over to introduce our guest for today? Yeah, let's go straight into it. Okay. So um, our guest for today is, I actually met him through a mutual friend, actually somebody who's already been on uh, social convos, and that is Doreen. And uh, Doreen, while, sp while speaking to her, she was like, you have to meet James. You have to meet James. And I was like, who? Who is this James? And why is he so special? And why is he all the way in Spain? And why is Tenerife so far from Spain? And basically, we got to meet meet each other. And in our first meeting, which was digital, of course, because I'd love to go to Tenerife, but currently that's that's not an option for me. But in the first meeting, he already taught me something new, and um, I was like, okay, wow, this is cool. This is a cool tool. And then I found out that he actually is using Agile, uh, the Agile method for social media, which is very interesting to me because uh, year, about five years ago, I was also searching like, how can you implement Agile into social media? So this is somebody who I've only recently just met, but we had a really fun talk and uh, we connected. And it's somebody who is really uh, into social, who is actually also an international speaker. And without further ado, we'd like to introduce to you, Mr. James Stucker. James, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank welcome you very much. Welcome to Social Convo, James. And hey. yes, you are talking. Um, just before we went live, James was giving me like some geography lessons on Tenerife and all the islands, like seven or eight islands, like right to the west of the Sahara. And you talk about Spain. So how does that even make sense, James? I know it doesn't at all, does it? I know most people I speak to, uh, I know we had this conversation before, um, mainly for the British, really, because for Tenerife, if you don't know, it's a huge, or was, and the minute it's got struggles, obviously, for obvious reasons with COVID, uh, but it's a huge holiday resort. And it's very, very popular for British, as well as um, people from Northern Europe. We don't get fantastic weather in the summertime. And of course they come down to the Canaries, one of which is Tenerife or Gran Canary or one of the other many islands. And that of course there's a big plus there and it's got sunshine all year round. <laughs> we're, we're laughing <laughs> off the comments. First of all, Saf says, hey y'all, hey, thanks for joining in again. Uh, Gregory, we're gonna go into the what's agile later, but he's also saying that's a very, very British accent. And, he, he's also saying, can you say bottle of water? <laughs> well, uh, bottle um, of it, water. <laughs> okay, Gregory. Hey, he did it for you. Now you have to send him some Ethereum, okay? So, uh, it, it, it just depends. It just depends on what dialect of English or British English you actually want, whether you want it in London accent, a Manchester accent, which of course is where I'm originally from, uh, Manchester. If you're from Manchester, you just say water. Wow. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> if you if you if you if you proper Brit, you know, if you proper posh British, it's water. <laughs> so, awesome. So speaking of um, the, the British, uh, so uh, uh, assuming from your accent and mm. some of your background, uh, you're all the way in kind of Spain now, but you're originally from the UK. So. Tell us a story, like how did you even end up to this like island in the middle of the Atlantic? In the middle of the Atlantic. Well, again, as I as I mentioned before, um, it's a it's a huge it's a it's a huge holiday resort island. I, I came to Tenerife as you probably do, do when you're in your early twenties. I came on a lads' holiday, you know, party mood. Came to Tenerife, went to 
The resort area is actually on the south side of the island. So it's a huge complex. It's really a massive, huge um, industry. And it's one of the biggest economies here um, for the island. So I came here, knew of it as being a bit of a party, a party island, uh, you know, sunshine, beaches. But, don't need to go into any more. <laughs> but you say holiday, sunshine island, but uh, you kind of like operate from there now, right? Like uh, now do, in a professional yeah. sense. So yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about this, uh, the digital nomad movement and that yeah. a lot of these islands, you know, get attracted or are attracting a lot of um, individuals or freelancers or just people from big companies who are working remotely from these islands. And so what is it aside from the partying and, you know, being remote that attracts these nomads and that attracted you, I guess, yeah, for well, working? For working, absolutely. I mean, of course, it's a lifestyle. Uh, so you, you choose it. You choose a lifestyle. You've got that sunshine, and you really do have sunshine all year round. Um, Tenerife is actually named the island of eternal spring because it's got a spring-like temperature for twelve months of the year. We've literally had two weeks of bad weather, and that's it. It's finished with the the. The only way forward now we're in May is it's just going to get hotter because we're going to go into a summer season. Then it cools down. So as part of that, yes, you've got the weather here, but you've got absolutely fantastic activities here as well. So it's actually quite amazing, like almost like a surfer's paradise. So you can just go surfing most places on the island uh, and other islands as well. So you're not just strictly restricted to Tenerife. Um, all the other islands are in close proximity. So if you want want to have a change, you can go on a ferry. I can go to Grand Canary within 40 minutes. I can go to the south side of the island and go to another another island, which is called Lagomera, again, in 40 minutes. Some of the other ones, like Fuerteventura, which is a lot more nearer to um, the west coast of Africa. Again, you're only talking about a couple of hours to get to them. They also have um, flights to them as well, which, again, if you're going to take a flight, it's 20 minutes between going from one island to the next. So, A, you can island hop very, very easily, but you've just got all this huge amount of uh, activities. Sea activities, like I say, with surfing, you can go hiking. You've got amazing food here. So, also, you've got, not strictly speaking, the Spanish food, because, of course, it is another story for you with, Grand, with, with the Canary Islands. It, it, the, the Canary people as well, so they actually take on board a different culture than what they do from mainland Spain. Of course, we also have a very close tie to South America as well because of the trade routes that the Canaries used to use when I think Christopher Columbus came to the Canary Islands to basically spin him off towards uh, the conquest of South, South, South America. So it's got a very, very strong link. We have a very large community with um, Venezuela as well. So we have that culture here as well. So it's a really nice mixture of culture, not only just from mainland Spain, but also from uh, Latin America as well. And then on okay. top of that, the infrastructure here is amazing. We've got, you know, high-speed internet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a digital nomad and you want a bit of fun and, you know, you want that lifestyle, you want that sunshine, you can work from a MacBook. We know now we've jumped into a different realm of having video technology in terms of things like what we're doing now, which is possible then it makes the Canary Islands such an attractive place. Plus, geographically, from an economy point of view, we're next to Africa. We're only a flight, well, Spain, I told, I told you so, dear. we're only, say, three hours away from, say, Madrid or Barcelona. So we're primarily positioned for Europe. We're also primarily positioned because if I pop my head out the balcony and look left, the only wall I'm looking across the water. The next piece of island, the next piece of well, if you call it an island, <laughs> the next the next bit of country I come along to is either Florida or South America or the Caribbean. <laughs> no, but but Diego, I almost want to go into to to some quick fire questions because there are so many questions I want to ask. Right yeah, now. But, definitely. But, Just uh, before you do, I'm I'm adding Tenerife to the two visit list and. Uh, we will we'll see you in a few months, years, uh, James. Yeah. You should you should you should definitely you should definitely come over here, definitely. So and James, also, for people that are watching, <laughs> are there any vacancies in in your company right now? <laughs> I get this I get this all the time. When I did, well, you, you'll you'll know uh, our good friend um, Doreen. 
so the, the last summit I did, the social media content summit, and of course we're go, we're, we're doing one actually next month. Yeah, the amount of people said, Where, where's this guy from? He's from, he sounds British, but he's not in Britain. He's in Tenerife. Again, all the backstory with regards to the sunshine, the lifestyle. And he, he's like, everybody said, went, have you got any positions in your company? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it feels like, it feels like such a good sales pitch. Like for anybody who has, doesn't have any uh, commitments right now, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can have Sunday here on. I can go to a place. So why is the, the internet connection? Is there a reason why the internet connection in Tenerife is so good? I could I could actually be wrong on this, but I, I seem to think I remember reading about it somewhere. But of course, <laughs> you can't believe this sometimes. I, I remember watching the, the, the lay of um, cable networks for the internet. Yeah, I, I kind of thought to myself, oh, surely all this is operated by satellites. But actually, there's a physical piece of infrastructure that's basically done on the back of a ship on a on a roller, and they roll out a cable in the Atlantic Ocean to connect America with the rest of the world and Europe and so on. And I actually think, and I might be completely wrong on this, but I've got a I've got a feeling that to lay that cable, they rerouted it <laughs> between the Canary Islands, uh, the Canary Islands up to Europe. <laughs> and, and 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 because you're so close to the ocean. Uh, there's like nobody who can screw up the connection between where it comes land inwards and where you're actually stationed. So I guess that also plays a very important role. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of comments. There are a lot of Gregory's in the comments, so don't get confused with them. First, Gregory wants to tell you this is your audio sounds amazing. It's the best audio I've heard from any guest so far. And he says it might have to do with your British accent, why it's even twice as good. Another Gregory wants to jump in and say like, has ever anybody ever told you you sound like Ricky Garvez? God, that's that, that's that's completely new. Ricky Gervais is um, <laughs> yeah. he's I, I, here's the thing. He's a, he's not a Londoner, but he's from the south of England, and I'm from uh, Northern England. We shouldn't have the same accent. Okay. <laughs> but and, thank and, you very much because he's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you have any vacancies? He will work for Dogecoin. <laughs> So, so a couple of quick fire, and just to give you quick fire heads up, is just we're gonna ask you two questions, and then uh, and then you can tell us which one uh, you like better, and uh, and and these are very simple questions, and basically to test how much you have integrated into Spain oh already. So, so the first question is uh, sangria or lager? Mm. Okay, um, lager definitely. Don't like sangria. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, paella or black pudding? Ooh, uh, black pudding. <laughs> <laughs> you've done, listen, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have to ask, I mean, uh, as a British, when, when I have a British guest, we don't have a lot of British guests, so these are always fun to see, like, what, what is, okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you now. Uh, hiking or surfing? Oh, surfing. Yeah, okay. Definitely. And, not and uh, last one, and then Diego will, will take over. Oh, um, no. Piercings or, or tattoos? Tattoos. Yeah. Oh, I've got the wrong arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diego, do, do you have a couple of quick fires as well? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, you're in social media right now, but uh, if, if you look at uh, the different social media platforms, uh, Twitter or TikTok? Uh, I'm 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 too old now. It's got to be Twitter. <laughs> it's got to be. I can't. Yeah, I've tried. I've, I've tried TikTok. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's for a younger generation now. All uh, right, leave it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's go back. I think you already hinted at this, but Microsoft or uh, Apple? It's got to be Apple, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, it's got to be Apple. You know, uh, Microsoft. I mean, who is? I mean, is it still going Microsoft these days? <laughs> <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? Because at one time, I mean, at, at one time, everybody used to use Windows, didn't they? Yeah. Windows XP. Yeah, in the nineties, and, and yeah, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, in the nineties, early two thousand. Yeah. 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 Just, just could... for your information, I, I still use Windows. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> anyways have, we have Jill in the comments saying apple all the way no but i, yeah. I mean also like uh diego it's it's funny that you use windows but also i mean uh explorer i mean we at a certain point in time we would like look how innovative an organization was based on whether or not they were still using internet explorer or not basically uh, that was kind of a sign knowing like oh okay you're in that generation it's also kind of similar like knowing how old the company is if they have a yahoo address we know like oh they've been around since you know <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that i um it was only actually a couple of days ago literally only a couple of days ago i was talking to um actually it was a client of mine it's kind of a sort of sim similar age give or take uh, five or six years and i remember telling him um seeing an internet browser for the first time back in before it was like a kind of a commercial ex, um success yeah. and i was actually at salford university back in 1993 and we were still using predominantly uh I keep, the operating system was dos 6 i don't know if you remember dos, DOS yeah, yeah yeah so i used to use like dos 6 as a kind of a base operating system and a mate of mine gave me a nudge and he said hey james have a look at this and i was like what, what am i looking at here you know it's this kind of graphical front end it was still primitive um but it was a graphical front end with um almost like a table of contents but the table of contents were hyperlinked and it was the first time I was looking at um, a web browser, and it was Netscape. Yeah, I was just going to say Netscape. So, okay, for most people, so can you quickly, for those people who are not familiar with DOS, ex explain what DOS is? <laughs> DOS. If I got this right, this is, this, this is testing me. This is, this is testing me. So DOS, right, it was a disk operating system developed by Microsoft. So it was basically what uh, propelled Bill Gates to his uh, fame and his and, he, and his and his fortune, and he was just I don't know, it was just, it was just a what, what do you call it a command line? Well, it was a command line operating yeah. system. Yeah. So it wasn't a GUI. Uh, it was literally, if I remember rightly, it was a black background screen, white uh, text, and literally when you booted up your machine, mainly being a PC. I think my first PC was a three eight six. And IBM 38, well, they were all IBM emulators in a sense, weren't they? So it was a 3x6 machine, DOS 6.2, um, powered up the machine, and you just got a little flashing cursor. Yeah. And that was it. It was like waiting yeah. for your command. What What do you want me to do? Run. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Run. <laughs> that <dot> XE. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. all right, first time, the first time I used Windows, it was Windows Three point. Do you remember this one? Windows three point one. Oh, three point. Was it three point five? I, I don't know. I I heard it. I never used it. I started with ninety eight. It was before Windows. It was definitely before Windows XP. And you had to. So in order to run Windows, you had to boot up your machine. So it went into DOS. The DOS give you the waiting flashing cursor. So then you'd have to type in run space win, and then it would start Windows. <laughs> All right, James. Um, <laughs> since it's just, since we landed in the realm of you know programming and oh, the history of Microsoft, um, <laughs> you have quite some history with the IT world as well before moving to social media, right? Um, having done software, so I guess why did you do that and then make the jump to so social media or just uh, marketing in general all of a sudden? It's a long, long, it's a long, long story. In some respect, it's kind of probably easy to say I kind of fell in it. And once I fell into it, I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, I probably, because actually, ultimately, when I when I finished, when I was at university, I was um, I did a degree in software engineering. So my kind of sort of like career progression after university to get to go into the you know real work. I was then a software engineer. So software engineer, you know, coder, um, fell into uh, web development. So web development way before it was categorized, you know, like today, like you get web development and it's, you're either classified as a front end, a back end, a full stack. That didn't really exist. Like, <laughs> sound like an old man, eh? That didn't really exist back in the day. <laughs> 
He didn't. He was just. He was just. It's a okay. We won't. We, we won't ask your age. But go. <laughs> go on. <laughs> I'm. I'm quite old now. So you were just you were just a web developer, but to sort of do yourself a dis- disservice, which sometimes I do do myself because I kind of just go, I was a you know as a web developer, but because I did those different roles, so a you had to be a front end developer, so you had to do the graphical design of it. Plus, she was a back end developer, so you had to do all the back end systems. I was already in that sort of creative state anyway, so I was already and, and I, if I'm honest with you, I was a better front end developer than what I was a back end. So I wouldn't tend to naturally lead to doing more front end front end stuff, um, and of course that was kind of like very um, still primitive in terms of the sort of technologies that we were using, although they were state of the art uh, at the time, and especially what we kind of see and we're used to now. So I kind of did that for a good uh, good few years, and I think. I ended up working actually for a Canadian bank and a just natural progression was, Hey James, what do you want to do? You know, in terms of career progression, you know, do you, you don't want to be a coder all your life, do you? And I was like, well, I actually quite enjoy it, but th- there's a side to coding as well that the one thing I didn't particularly enjoy was it felt as though you were a little bit more, this, this isn't probably now more so what I'm talking about uh, late nineties, I guess, early 2000. I felt as though, uh, from a communication point of view, I was missing that human interaction, and I wasn't getting that from web development. You know, web development was like James, list of code, sit down, code it, get on with it, out, out, output the. Sounds <laughs> very isolated, and yeah, the, the products from it, you know, and I was like, when, uh, and people kind of like saw, I don't know, something in me that I didn't really give myself justice. So it was like James, you're a good talker, you're a good community, uh, community, you know, good gatherer, good team player, blah blah blah. You're gonna be, you'd be good at leading teams. So I actually naturally fell into then still working with coding teams, but fell into a project management role. So I kind of just left coding to one side completely and uh, went into being a digital project manager, which is probably what we we'll, we'll move into later on, but. Yeah, I went into digital project management and then obviously um, Agile became part of my project management life. Um, And then eventually I ended up working for a company which was a a digital marketing agency. So it was still predominantly producing products from a web development side of things, but because it was a marketing agency, I got that in-depth knowledge in terms of um, marketing uh, and, and and of course, because we're advancing forward with with these technologies, web, social media became prevalent in terms of everyday uh, businesses. So, I have kind of gone through a journey where IT was just something in the background. It wasn't sort of like at the forefront of a business, or it wasn't seen to be that way. It certainly wasn't sexy. Whereas like now it's kind of like, it's everything, you know, you, you, yeah. you, you can't run a business without a web. You can't run a business without social media. Um, even though we're doing like, now we're becoming more involved in terms of digital uh, media, in terms of video, you know, just if, even if you just use video as a standalone um, point, that was unthinkable, say 10, even 10 years ago, you know, so like the things that we're doing now, you would never dream of doing 10, 10 years. I want to quality, pause there for the a second. Yeah, yeah, the quality wasn't good enough either. So I guess. No, exactly. Was, yeah. I, I want to pause there for a second before we go further on the social media side. And I, I sense that uh, based on your IT experience, then project management, and uh, we already had this question before what's agile? It's that's where you got the agile, um, uh, learned agile and learn to apply it. And I think this is the, what you're using as a core differentiator in your social media strategy right now. So for the people who don't know, could you briefly explain what Agile is and how did you like uh, translate that into the social media when you ended up there in the end? Yeah, so Agile, I mean, this is, this is good because there's two sides to Agile. Uh, in terms of what I'm going to explain here. So for Cruise Creative, which is 
mine and because um, of course there's a gator as well so from we're a social media management agency and so we use agile every single day um, within the agency there but of course agile has its roots in software development so agile is a really big buzzword at the minute in terms of marketing but of course agile started off in this software development world which is how i how i picked it up but I was applying it to I was applying it to my everyday life, being now in marketing. That I didn't really know that it was out there; it was prevalent. So agile, in, the, in a sense, is when I started doing digital project management, we worked in what was called a waterfall method. So there's all these different types of methodologies. So when I first started doing projects for you know particular software products. We would we would fall into what was called a waterfall model. So you you have to start off at a um, certain point, which is a requirement. Before you can finish your requirement and move on to the next step, you've got to finish that requirement point and then move down onto. Uh, so you'd have a project definition, then requirement, then you'd do the development, then you would do testing, and then you would get feedback from the customer or then potentially roll out that product. Now there's a lot of issues um, involved in that. Mainly being that if you're using a waterfall model, you're not getting continual feedback from the customer. Uh, also, your projects will be time boxed in terms of they're never they're going to run for quite some time. You're never going to get that feedback from your customer, so you're never going to have continual improvements. You might not even be matching to what the customer customer requirements are. And for a majority of waterfall projects you tend to go over budget with it as well. So you always kind of, once you've finally landed that project or that product, it's not what the customer wants. A, you've overspent on it. And so really it was getting kind of really a bad name and you're not delivering a product on time to budget. Agile works really different to that because what you're doing is you're releasing quick iterative developments. If you're talking about software, development we can apply this to any you can actually apply this to anything in life but how i picked it was from a software um world so you're basically delivering products in small chunks in iterative workloads so you're not doing this delivery of products for say a six month spell you're delivering something that's tangible for two weeks four weeks you never go over that period so you're just quickly releasing products all the time and a you're not wasting that time you're not wasting a lot of money like you would do with a, a waterfall method but you're also continually with the customer getting feedback all the time if something does go wrong guess what you've only wasted two or four weeks you've not wasted six months which could be very costly in terms of budget and also time um, on yourself. So that's, in a sense, in a, in a very, very basic, basic nutshell, is Agile just allows you to work and release products fast. I don't sometimes like the idea of when it says fast, because fast sometimes also kind of brings in the, the concept that you're not delivering quality as well, <laughs> because you just, there's, there's some things like, I'm gonna deliver something as fast as possible, so A, your quality goes, goes down but also it's a little bit unfair on the people that you're working with because you're trying to get, it feels like you're trying to get the most out of them. What well, you're not trying to do that, you're trying to make your teams as efficient as possible. That is less costly, but you're also releasing products fast at the same time. Now that's in the software, that's in the software development world, but you can, I believe that you can apply agile into everything in your life so we say we apply agile to marketing but you can apply agile to everything that you work on in in, in life to even planning i don't know planning uh, a wedding <laughs> you could you, you could you you could use you could use agile for so and again i kind of fell i kind of fell into that in kind of like a mistake i knew it was a good methodology to use because of that experience in software development so I took that, and when I started to run with Cruise Creative, being my own agency, although that's not a, a development or a software house, 
you know, it's a marketing agency. I just adopted Agile and applied it to marketing techniques because you can do. Because I work with clients and clients want a given delivery of a, of, uh, of a product that I can use Agile methodology to apply those techniques. I, don't know I think, yeah, I think it works really well because in the end your clients also have clients that are expecting like communication on a on a certain a certain <clears throat> set of time. So I think that the reason I found Agile so interesting for social media is because um, with software development, of course you can do Agile as well, but often, especially if you have to build an application or a website, it's basically a one and done. You build a thing and yeah, there, there is a surface contract connected to it, but basically when the website is done, the website is done. Whereas social media, you kind of iterate whether it's a week, whether it's a month, it's kind of also, and we also adopted it for Ineffable because we wanted to build on a monthly level, a uh, monthly basis. And when you're gonna build on a monthly basis, your clients are gonna wanna evaluate on a monthly basis as well. So you kind of automatically get into uh, this kind of structure where it's like, okay, wait, there's actually a methodology to, to this. Let's read into what the methodology is. And I think it's, that makes it really uh, interesting to use it in, in, in social media. But what I also find interesting is like, how do you, like, how do you convince like companies that are like really old fashioned that are not looking at, at it in, in such a way do you in the end compromise and say like, okay, we're, we're gonna do a waterfall uh, technique for, for this project? Or you say like, we can find ways that we can actually adapt it to Agile. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good point. Um, I had that kind of situation when, when I picked up digital project management, I was working for a Canadian bank in uh, Manchester and predominantly because of banks, as, as we know, they're heavily regulated. There's a lot of red tape. So the, their methodology was always around uh, waterfall because with, with waterfall model in terms of what they were adopting, every single uh, waterfall step below is kind of, a, before you get, before you can get to the next level down, it, you have to go through a sort of kind of a sign off gate. So you kind of, before the requirements can move into I don't know, say like the development, you've got to have a sign off on the requirements before you can move on to the next step. So it was very sort of a very gated process. And of course, banks want that because of the way they're heavily uh, regulated and the red tape that they like. And especially with the UK banks, um, I think the governing body was the FSA. And of course, the troubles that we had with the banking collapses for like um, 2008, they need that kind of in place. Now, of course, we know the problems with waterfall model because if you're looking at a particular product and it takes a long time to get that product to market, Agile is a much better way to release a product quickly. And once you've released it quickly, guess what you do? You just keep improving releasing cycles of that software or that marketing plan. Now, the one way the bank was very, very as well as others who adopt waterfall methodology, they're very reluctant at sort of, as anybody is, anybody kind of is in a sense reluctant to changes, especially at large corporations. You have to do a lot of, you know, convincing. The great thing with Agile is, is it's a good methodology that you can test out on smaller products. So the, 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 the buy-in is, is let's not make a massive, let's not make a huge change and go, across the departments and just say, let's swap out the waterfall methodology and replace it by Agile. Pick on a small tangible project and work on that and, and kind of almost use that as a case study uh, and a proof of concept that Agile can can work. And yeah, of course, you know, you're gonna get, um, you know, restrictions you know, people are not going to ex not people are not going to be quite happy to accept it. But agile in that respect, um, it certainly worked um, for the for the bank. Um, it didn't happen overnight, but at least minimal changes happened, and they start started to adopt agile. I think I spoke to somebody from that bank literally only about say six months ago. I think 
probably around about, if I can guess, it's probably about three quarters of their projects are now agile. So it was oh, a wow. slow, so That's it was a very, cool. very slow adoption. But they did start off that way. Start just start small and use that as your test bed to apply um, agile. Okay, uh, we have a question which is because we want to jump to make the jump from the technical project management <laughs> side to the digital content creation, and we have some guests who want to help us uh, do that. And then Gregory's question is. <laughs> Could you give your opinion on the future of memes? I believe that memes have become more sophisticated and a way to bring down the whole existing narrative through humor. <laughs> I think that's brilliant, actually. I, um, you know, I'm a massive, fan, I'm a massive fan of it at the minute. Is um, Giphy. Giphy, Giphy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I absolutely uh, love Giphy. I've got into it in a really big um, way at the minute um creating my own and actually starting to create my own memes so you can uh, answer actually any question that comes into your page you can answer with a gift from from yourself i'll be honest with you that's that is I, I, that is my plan to do, that is my actual plan to do M uh, mentioning that <laughs> I, I found it quite funny it, it took me a second to realize when i shared the, the announcement on instagram yesterday uh today and when I woke up this morning, I, I saw you, you reshared it, and I saw this GIF. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. wait, how did this guy <laughs> yeah, make yeah. himself? It, it was really funny and actually quite, uh, I, I was quite intrigued by it and how, you, how, how easy it is to do. And so qu quickly on that, like, well, what's your thought process behind that? And how do you decide, like, what kind of GIF to go for? Like, how humorous, how crazy do you go with it? Do you know what? I, I don't. It's. I, I absolutely uh, love it, and I'm trying to think to myself now how I kind of like stumbled across it because we all know, like with um, gifts uh, or gifts, however you want to call them. Again, it, they're they're not. It's not a new thing. It's they're, they're, they're kind of a really old concept. You know, PNG files took over from gifts because of like the quality of graphics, but it seems to have like a resurgent. For you know, creating gifts again, and I thought to myself, I thought, how do I? Because here's 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 the thing, especially with what we work with at the minute in terms of social media, people like people people like the people like you being authentic, and I kind of thought to myself, though, how can how can we be a little bit different here and just sort of stand out a little bit from from the crowd, not to use the sort of standard stock. Yeah, stock gifts that are available, but also to put your brand, your voice, <laughs> and have a little bit of like uh, fun with it. So I didn't actually realize. I knew that there was um, uh, the the Giphy platform, but what I didn't realize when I actually looked into it in a little bit more depth that you could actually set up your own brand account. Right? I never, I, I oh, never knew this. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so I never knew this. I've only just, I've only just found this out. Right. So you can go to you can go to Giphy. You can set up. It's, it's actually super easy to set up. So you create yourself an account on Giphy. Once you set up yourself an account on Giphy, upload five gifts. So five gifts that you've made yourself, and then you basically register yourself as a brand account. Give it a couple of days. I'll normally come back to you because they're basically just checking that you you know you are who you are. You've uploaded um, only five gifts. This is it. Only five gifts. So upload five gifts. Nine times out of ten, you'll get approved. Once you've done that, and as long as you've tagged your content, so those five pieces of gifts, yeah, you normally have to put a hashtag against them. So choose out hashtag wisely. My hashtags are just as simple as Cruise Creative. Guess what happens then? Once you've been approved, you can go into your story, click on GIF, <laughs> and it's there. This is really brilliant. You this can... is really brilliant. <laughs> that that is that is that is good stuff. Yeah, uh, for for the marketing people listening now, <laughs> it's absolutely. Now here's the other thing for even the meme culture. <laughs> <laughs> now here here's 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 the other best thing. This was unbelievable. I, I'll, honest to God, I only opened up this Giphy brand account just over a week ago. 
the reach on it or the views on those gifs are amazing they're like uh do you know the one you saw i guess you know the one you saw on my story which i think it was me just yeah, doing right. this <laughs> it's got about i only uploaded it about five days ago it's got like something like seven thousand views on it yeah that's pretty cool it's better than 7, tiktok 000. you've you've hacked tiktok james <laughs> Seven thousand views. Now, the great thing about this, we can all have. We're all having. A, we're all having a laugh with this. But the actual link to these gifts actually go, uh, it, it's dependent on what your call to action is. So the, the actual gift is will refer back to, for example, for for mine, it takes me to the website, takes us to the Cruise Creative website. So the, we we all have a laugh with this, but also. What you can see in it is absolutely super powerful. So to go back to, I'm sorry, I forgot the, the name of the guy's uh, the question for the memes. There, there is definitely, a, there definitely is a future. <laughs> There's definitely a future for the people listening in. Make some social confos gifs from this, <laughs> from these conversations, <laughs> and we'll hook them up. <laughs> Um, Sean, look, your audio is out. Oh. Yeah. I guess I have to plug in. I have to plug in again. <laughs> this is terrible. I have to buy a new uh, headset, guys. Uh, that's that's the biggest problem. But uh, can you guys hear me now? Not at all. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So, so what we have to do now is, if you have ever, have you guys searched the gifts on Suriname? No. Okay. I should have brought my. Uh... I have not. Let me see if I've got more. But that's some homework. <laughs> so, so one of the most popular gifts, aside from our former president, Daisy Bouters, who appears if you in, in WhatsApp and in Facebook, if you type in Suriname, there's one of the most popular gifts in Suriname is actually a toad that has. Uh, lays egg in a very weird way and small toads come out of the back of the toad. Do you know that, Jeff Diego? No, I don't, actually. I'm, I'm looking it up right Everybody now. Everybody that's watching, search the Suriname toad gif and never do it while eating or having an appetite or a craving to eat something because it's one of the most disgusting gifts out there and it's one of the most famous gifts from Suriname. Just, just to put it in perspective. So we definitely need quality Surinamese gifts. So if you're watching this and you're like, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go to Givy, gonna make five gifts and get yourself a brand of the code and make Surinamese gift, we would really appreciate that. <laughs> I've got one actually, which I can, where is it now? Um... There so, we go. There you go. There's there's a brand account. So you've got a brand account there for Cruise Creative. It's like literally only over a week old. So it's got sixty five thousand uh, GIF views, and they're just yeah, uh, transparent GIF backgrounds that I use in in the stories. I think it's something for us to consider, Sean, look to reach, uh, especially through DMs and instant messaging, because gifts get used a lot. Uh, <laughs> aside from, you know, instead of pushing people to social media accounts to follow this, follow that, hashtag use this GIF as a comment, even better. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think I, I just think there's there's there's, there's definitely something that we can, we can get from that. What's your Give take? Um, you briefly touch on this, on, on the, the memes and meme culture. What's your take or, yeah, I guess it's more on a human behavior side, but from your experience, uh, why do people uh, enjoy this funny, disgusting, humorous gifs? Why, why does it work? Because it, it's, it's basically a picture it's even shorter than a video. It's like a mo moving picture for like one and a half to two seconds. It sometimes even loops like to infinity. 
I don't know what it, I don't know what it is at all. It's like it's well, almost like it's a phenomenon, isn't it? Really. Well, why do you use it? <laughs> do you know what I actually? The reason why I use it. I mean, the, those I've just showed you there are, are not. Uh, I mean, they're they're not memes. They're just part of GIF, and they're just some fun way of adding um, our brand and our voice uh, to stories. You know, rather than just using like the sort of stock. But in terms of memes. I like them personally because I don't think you saw this one actually, John Luke. Um, it was actually our friend Doreen had mentioned something about Agile on LinkedIn, and she's a super fan, right, Doreen, of using Post-it notes. And I go mad at her and say to her, "Well, what are you still using Post-it notes for? You know, pieces of paper. I know you can stick them on a board and so on. I said, you're still using that. How come you're not using like electronic?" Um, digital boards like i don't know jira or trello or something like that. i do use that i said but i do like my uh, kind of like post-it notes so i was like oh, you know it's so old old hat anyway she put um a comment on linkedin now you'll know from linkedin from from a voice point of view we're all meant to be kind of like super serious business conversation but you'll notice that there is a little bit of an element that's creeping into linkedin that People are starting to show like life at the weekend, starting to show like the cat, the dog, <laughs> family members. You know, he's starting, he's like starting to creep in. But Doreen put a comment on there with regards to um, Agile. And you made a comment, um, John Luke, about you thought it was a stack of books, but it wasn't. It was a stack of post it notes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I kind of looked at it and kind of thought, I've got to jump in there with um, a meme. I said, that deserves a meme, but it was a very personalized meme. And it was, are you are you fans of Back to the Future? So you you know the, yeah, uh, yeah. the doc? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a background of, of the doctor, and I actually put a meme over the top of the, the, the you know, the, the, the right font and the meme over the top of it. I kind of said, where we're going. There's there's no post-it notes. <laughs> All right, speaking, you know, we're going into the future. There's no post-it notes here, so I actually love creating my own. I actually I like creating my own memes. <laughs> there's just something that I just think is I just think it's super fun to actually do. <laughs> I, I want to bring it together a bit. So we we've talked about GIFs. We talked about Agile. And uh, uh, another phenomena in communication that's on the rise is the use of emojis, but not just in communication, just in text in general, in descriptions. If you look at all these Discord servers, check on Twitter, people are starting to use a lot of emojis for a channel. And I know you use Notion as well uh, to, to apply you know, your, your agile principles. And Notion is very... Uh, it, it encourages to use GIFs, uh, icons as well, to, to yeah. uh, for your pages and notes so how do you use no notion uh, combine yeah. it with agile and yeah. combine it with this way of communicating uh in in your daily or you know processes for work projects or just personal yeah. i liked do you know what the the one great thing is i loved it when you sent me an invite for this particular show on the back of it was a notion link Really massive fan of Notion. I love the, the I love the simplicity of it in terms of the 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 user the user interface. The simplicity of it's like it's kind of gorgeous. Really, it sounds really strange. It's gorgeous, but it's so it's kind of like so simple. It's yeah. Um, I, I was fell in love with it immediately when I got introduced to it. Yeah, when I saw it, I was just like there was something about it. It's like it's not. <laughs> You know, graphic, you know, user interface wise, it's just such a nice um, interface. But at the same time, it's such a complex database system as well. There's so much you can do with it. Um, we, we, we certainly use on our day to day basis our agile uh, in terms of how we plan content is 100% in, in Notion. Um, I know you, you can use it for many other things, but the other great thing about it is is the communication of it. Um, because we apply Agile to our Notion system, or our, however you want to call it, our Notion boards, we have a great way of communicating that and being transparent with all our clients. Um, 
And because I said of the, the sort of beauty of it and the simplicity of it, our clients are completely on board with it. At, at, at the start, I'm not too sure about its popular. I'm guessing it is popular, but it's not as popular as, say, for Trello. We tried Trello out with clients, and they get completely confused by it, um, refuse to use it. I've never really particularly had a client who refuses to use Notion. Um, you can put your own brand on it. You can put your own um, communication take on it. Uh, it's just super. It's just such a clean system and environment to uh, work with. But at the same time, you can put a touch of your own voice and brand on there. And the great thing is, is what you were saying there. It's it's like it. it technologies come around. Technologies or um, trends come around in cycles. So I'm a big, I, I, when I use Notion, I'm a big user of using emojis in it to convey um, emotion. And emojis are so simple, aren't they? But they're so simple, but everybody uses emotion, um, emojis through text messages to emails to any other messaging platform that you're using. Everybody uses that. It's kind of like commonplace. So why wouldn't you use that in systems like Notion? Fantastic system. I, I want to jump into this because basically Notion brings together Google Docs and Asana or Trello or any of those project mm. management tools. And I want to, uh, yeah, so Marlon mentions something which we can plug in. I remember reading once that Suriname was in the top three for using emojis. It was it was reactions. So let, let me go in if I would like to see if GIFs and memes, if, if we are somewhere uh, there as well. To, to, uh, to talk about Marlon's uh, uh, mention of the emo uh, emojis, it was actually reactions. The first year that Facebook went from the like button to those five different reactions, oh, yeah, we yeah. were in the top 10 of the world when it comes to actually using those. So not in total, but like on average compared to how many people were using Facebook at the time in our country, we kind of adapted very quickly. Because you have to imagine, like, we are a very humorous country. So if somebody would fall into the gutter somewhere in Europe, uh, then people would just give it a like because, oh, somebody would be like, okay, uh, we like that you actually mentioned this. Let's do something about it. But if somebody would fall into the gutter in Suriname, mm. there would be three people laughing, doing the haha uh, reaction. And then there would be two people upset at the government. So they would be posting the bad emoji. And then there would be uh, two person uh, doing the caring emoji because they care about the person that fell down and they need fixing. And so we would be all over the place and showing different ranges of emotions. So I think, yeah, there is some truth to that as well that we, and it was also very obvious that in the top 10, there were like seven Latin American countries with high emotional response to things. Think, and, yeah, yeah we, we kind of, uh, in Dutch we call it late for Mark. Uh, I don't know what the term is in English, Diego. Do you know that? Um, late, late as in, you know, no, I, I can't come up with it on top of my head. So it's fun. It's, 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 it's meant to poke fun of the struggles or the pain of others. Oh, God. <laughs> And oh um, well, in German that's Schadenfreude, isn't it? When you yeah. is that similar to? It's a good question. Yeah, Schadenfreude in German is what I mean. English will use it as well, but it is a German word. Schadenfreude is yeah, is when you poke yeah. fun at someone's misfortune. Yeah, because yeah. because we have a lot of misfortune. Yeah. But the only way to give it a positive spin. Is to make a joke or a meme yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of happens a lot. <laughs> but I have to ask now because we talk about emojis. Have you guys already made a yet domain? Do you guys have a yet domain? No. A yet domain, did you yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's a W dot AT. And it's you get the domain where yeah. actually you can buy one emoji, two emojis, three emojis, four or five emojis after each other, and that's kind of your domain. And then you can link it to your Twitter bio. And so actually on my Twitter bio now, I have a yet domain. I took a really cheap one because doing three emojis is like 
a couple of hundred or even a thousand dollars and like yeah, five yeah. Uh, the cheap 10, 10 euro or ten dollar version and the, the less emojis you take so if you take love yet yeah that's probably a couple of thousand dollars to to get that uh but it's something to look at if you're if you're not familiar no i'm definitely, definitely going to look at that one thing i do use a lot of is uh i don't know if you guys use it is uh emojipedia Emojipedia, okay. Emoji, yeah. Emojipedia. So if you're really struggling or you just want to sort of be, you know, extra creative in terms of the – I use it a lot for – if you're doing copy for content posts, so you want to break it up a little bit and you want to add, uh, you know, a few random emojis there. So you can like, put words in if you know, you kind of, like, want a different emoji for star. So you type in the word star and it will give you all the variations of stars that you can have. Um, or you might want to have, uh, I don't know, toolbox. <laughs> Type in toolbox and it gives you kind of like random um, icons for representations for that word. So, yeah, I use uh, Emojipedia quite a bit as well for that. That's, that, that, that's, a, that's a cool site to go to as well for, emo for emoji uh, <laughs> recommendations or inspiration. Okay, but let's let's uh, do a final question and more into the to the content. I mean, a lot of people want to create content. Um, a lot of people have fears of not being able to do it. There's also a big difference between creating content for yourself as a personal brand or doing it as an agency for companies. Uh, for people that are interested, I want to start with creating content, but they are afraid because they have to get over the threshold. What what would be the advice that you want to give people that are interested in creating content but are afraid to start They're afraid to start i think we're all like that really um i used to be um i used to be very very <laughs> believe it or not i used to be very very fearful of doing video very very fearful of doing video um it's quite i don't know what you guys were like when you started to do um, lives especially the adoption of doing lives for the first time when you say like kind of I think if you're going to do content, the main piece of content you do need to focus on is video. You can do, um, you know, photos, graphics, you name it. But if you really want to sort of like drive forward with content creation, everybody needs to take on the adoption of video. Now, I know that's a massive hurdle for most people. Um, and like I said, it was kind of like a massive hurdle for myself as well. I don't know what it was. It was kind of like it was almost like the fear factor. Even though I'm talking to you guys now, I can see I can see who you are, but there's still an element that I'm talking to a camera lens. You know, no one knows how kind of like how strange how strange that feeling is, especially alone, as if you're doing solo videos. If you're doing solo videos, it's that technique and practice that you need to do in front of a camera to produce video, and that's a really fearful um, thing. Sounds so easy to do. Everyone's got it. Everyone has a mobile phone. Just keep practicing and practicing every moment that you can you can take. Practice in front of, I mean, I've got my uh, mobile now. Just practice like agile. content in terms of video. It's what, sorry? <laughs> Apply Agile to it. Apply Agile to it. <laughs> As I said, you've got to apply Agile um, to um, everything now. But the thing is, is once you record your first one, the first one, if I went back to the very first video I did, of course it's not going to be as good as what I can probably you know, do now. So you're always going to just accept that with time you're going to improve, but you need to do it. You need to press that record button and continue that kind of process of sort of like the, the, the sort of video making process. I don't know what you guys were like when you first did video, but to me, I mean, you're all super great in front of a, in front of a camera, but was you, was you great in front of a camera the first time you did it? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I dread the thought of going back and looking it up. <laughs> yeah. you should have a, you should have a look diego i i really think like especially the first the episode zero of social convos maybe look back at that, it that, that was interesting that was interesting i i, I was asking sean look okay so we're gonna start next week right all right <laughs> so we, we joined the session here and we're like okay so i'm asking him um so we're doing it live yeah yeah we're doing it live are you ready 
all right just just like that we went live okay <laughs> i didn't have any fancy setup nothing. i didn't give him a way out <laughs> we didn't give him well that's usually that's that's usually the best the best way of doing it the the, the thing is is to for, for people watching is is take this opportunity now because you, you know for example COVID enabled us to push a lot further in terms of using and adapting to these technologies so now's sort of like a great time to use it and everyone's got cheap cheap availability to tools like we're using now Streamyard. um we as an agency use Streamyard um extensively ourselves as well with um, our clients as well the clients first ones when we get them on board we push that's our main push we do with clients is to get them on board with video but also live video there's something very very special about doing live video especially kind of like what we're doing now so we always get clients on board let's push you towards live video it's super scary for them but also at the same time there's a lot of fun with it you know they come away they're a little bit sweaty <laughs> they're hot they're nervous there's an energy there but once it finished it's like wow that was great when do we do the next one so the first one's always a little bit nerve wrenching but once they've finished it there's a buzz there it's like wow did you see that person that person made this comment and in the head they're kind of thinking ah i've made an engagement with an audience there they've really enjoyed this show they've made a comment I made a comment to them verbally and they responded to it. Wow, I like this. This is this is really good. And in the head, they kind of go, right, okay, well, I did this wrong. I didn't do this quite right. Okay, we'll practice that, you know, for the next one. So it's a continual, you know, improvement. The main thing is, is you just got to get out there and do it. Yes, it is, you know, I'm being honest here. Yes, it's going to be a little bit scary and a little bit nerve wracking we, We've all done it. We're all in the same boat. But it gets easier with time. I think authenticity helps. I think people really like the authenticity of of video that you don't get to hide away. People get to see if you make a mistake, yeah. you make a mistake. Especially <laughs> live, because yeah. then yeah, you see the errors and you get that instant feedback loop, uh, like James was talking about, uh, that you get with agile as well, iterating it in the moment actually, and yeah, and adding to that authenticity, people feel you and you as a uh, creator, a video producer or, or client, get this intimate uh, connection with your audience directly, uh, getting that instant feedback. And I think that's that's a really great way to look at it, James. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us, kind of forcing people to go live, to, ju to just plunge into the depths and then go from there. And that's your buy-in basically. No, no, definitely. Because I, I mean, to sort of say like, you know, advice in terms of content creation. Well, content creation on its own is a very wide piece. But if you want to take an element of content creation, my go-to. So, like, you know, if we ever, you know, get a client on board and they say, "Oh, yeah, can you give us a content strategy?" Yeah. So, content strategy is like, well, it's a lot of things. Yeah. But one of the key things in that content strategy, I always push towards, is a live stream. And you should see the reaction sometimes when you say live stream, because they're super scared of it. <laughs> but they're scared of it. But at the same time, is that kind of, oh, yeah, I like what he's saying there. This is going to be this connection with an audience. I'm going to get this engagement. Yeah, there's an authentic side to it. Yeah, it is a little bit scary. But also at the same time, there's a lot of fun to it. And I quite like this adrenaline. <laughs> Awesome. We get, we got a few final comments here uh, from Seth. She's loving this tutorial. She's sold. So lovely, lovely session. Uh, and then she went to look for that code gift you sent. <laughs> Shanuk and yeah, I, I'm not even going to pronounce that. But if you've searched for it, you know what Seth means, probably. <laughs> but that with that being said, uh, James, it, it, this was a really, really fun conversation, really in depth and it took a very, I guess, not traditional marketing spin. We, we talked about GIFs, we talked about emojis, talked about video strategies, really cool stuff. So to give you like uh, the final word now, um, what can people expect from you? How can people find you? How can people connect with you if, if you 
want that at least uh, in the next few months or so? What can people look forward to? Well, as uh, myself and John Lowe, we can catch up with us on the social media summit, uh, which is uh, next month. So you'll be able to see both me and John Lowe. You're looking forward to that, aren't you, John? <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, I'm really scared, but I'm looking forward to it. And on, and and actually, on that note, if you do, we have got some exciting. I can't say too much of it at the minute because it's still under a little bit of um, development. But uh, I have got some news, some big news on agile marketing coming next month. So we are launching a platform. Target is probably beginning of June. I'm looking at around about June the 1st. So we are launching a coaching training platform around agile marketing. So there's more news to come on that. If you want to keep up to date on that news, you can always visit me on uh, www.cruisecreative.agency. Um, we're also on, that's the best place to get news updates. Um, and also on Instagram as well. It's probably the best place as well, which is cruise at cruise dot um, creative. But yeah, we've got some big news coming up and that's the big, big news. More, more, more agile stuff next month. Awesome. awesome. And, we'll and add those links. And, know, yeah. yeah, and for the people that don't know, there's already, I think, a white paper or an ebook that you can download if you want to know the basics of agile. Yes. So uh, we'll make sure, like Diego said, to add the links uh, to the description yeah. of this live. Yeah, and if you want to know more from a training point of view, like I said, there's going to be more news uh, next month. You'll be able to get that news off the website. Great. Uh, we'll add those, everything from James in the link. Follow him. Uh, check out the big announcement coming next month. And, yeah, as you guys know, this episode... Uh, the audio version will be released on Saturday, coming Saturday, on all the podcasting platforms. Um, if you, you may have noticed some tweaks on the website, uh, I saw some people actually entered their email in a newsletter. I, that was still in development, so that, that's Ooh, pretty cool. That's cool, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think in the next week or two, uh, there's going to be an overhaul on that site. So we're hoping to get that doing that more seriously. Um, also, at the bottom of the website, there are some uh, ways to, you can support us. Check that out as well. Uh, added some integrations there as well. So we're, do, we're being agile. We're iterating week by week. Um, and yeah, with that being said, shan uh, last word, and then close us out. Yes. Thank you so much for being our guest, James. We had a really fun time. This was really a social conversation. So we're really happy uh, to have you have had you as a guest on Social Confos. And as you guys know, we'll be back next week, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Surinamese time or wherever you are in the world. Thank you again for watching. This was Social Confos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.